in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. The season of Lent calls us to a time of preparation using a spiritual discipline that includes fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. We are living in wilderness times. From today's gospel lesson, right after his baptism, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And afterwards, he was hungry. We are in this wilderness emerging from the pandemic, trying to determine what the next step in our journey is going to look like. Many of you are struggling with where to re-enter the world, dining out, coming back to church, traveling. The wilderness occurs in the midst of our daily existence and in the midst of our life and faith. In the wilderness, we are trying to identify and affirm who we are. In this time of wilderness, we are relying on God for guidance and sustenance. As your priest, I can tell you it's not easy. In this time of wilderness, we all face temptations in one form or another. Chapter 3 of Matthew's Gospel ended with Jesus' baptism. After receiving the Holy Spirit, a voice from the heavens said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. In baptism, God the Father claims Jesus as his beloved son. Why does the Spirit lead Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? In this encounter between Jesus and the devil, we recall that temptation is part of life in the wilderness. The devil says, if or since you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes, after fasting for 40 days and nights, Jesus was hungry. The devil knows Jesus needed food. So he seeks a place of vulnerability in Jesus. Jesus uses Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3, where the Bible says, One does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes, we must feast daily on the word of God. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. The word of God is the true source of life. Then Jesus is tempted on the pinnacle of the temple, the temple of God. Using Psalm 91, verses 11 through 12, the devil says, Since you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you. Again, Jesus quotes Scripture 
in overcoming this temptation. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Here we are in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. What are those things that we do to tempt God? Here, we can even use scripture to help us. We tempt God when we complain about the lack of God's provision in our lives. Exodus chapter 7, verse 7. We tempt God when we fail to trust God to keep God's promise. Numbers chapter 14, verse 22. We tempt God when we doubt God's power to care for our needs. Psalm 78, verse 41. We tempt God when we harden our hearts and fail to respond to God's voice. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 9. The devil offers Jesus the world if Jesus will worship him. The devil increases the stakes by taking Jesus to the top of the temple in Jerusalem, the holy city. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these, all these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only who? And serve only him. Three temptations. Three times the devil tried to know since Jesus is the Son of God, what does that going to look like? You see, at the time, the ruler of the world was Caesar Augustus. Caesar declared himself as son of God. The money that people were using at the time had his picture on it with the inscription Son of God. So, if Jesus is the Son of God, what does that going to look like? What does Jesus' kingdom going to look like? How will Jesus' followers follow Jesus? You see, Jesus is not interested in taking the easy way out. Jesus is not interested in sheltering his life in the comfort of this world. Jesus is not interested in the false sense of security and safety that this world offers. The New Testament scholar Raymond Brown puts it this way. The three temptations try to divert the proclamation of God's kingdom so that it will become a kingdom according to the standards of the world. According to the standards of the world. My sisters and brothers, Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God. You see, unlike the Garden of Eden, where Adam yielded to the devil's craftiness, the devil will not get in the way of God building a world where compassion, love, and justice abound. The devil tried. The devil tried to get Jesus to stop relying on God's daily provision for his life. The devil tried to get Jesus to stop putting all his trust on the God who dwells in him. 
This is always the driving force behind our temptation as well. The devil attempts to get us to act on our own. Why do I need to depend on God? I have all that I need to survive. You see, that is the nature of temptation. Jesus was tempted to ensure that his understanding of security, power, and devotion are consistent, consistent with God's understanding of security, power, and devotion. In the Genesis story, God trusted Adam with power, and he gave it up when he listened to the serpent. Adam was willing to take a shortcut, and he lost it all. The question is, can God trust the second Adam, Jesus? More importantly, can we, Jesus' followers, can we trust Jesus and take him at his word? My sisters and brothers, temptation will come our way. It does not come to us because we are sinners. It comes to us because we are human, because we are human. And it is not driven by everything around us, but it is driven within us. Adam was tempted in the garden. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. There's no hiding from the inner forces of temptation. Temptation is trying to drive the wedge between us and Christ, between us and God. And so, we always have a decision to make. Who will we choose? Who will we follow? Jesus has prepared a way for us to follow. This Lent, I pray that we will choose to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. How will we confront our temptations? We must take the Bible into battle. The sword of the Spirit will bring victory every time. Take advantage of the opportunities this season of Lent gives you. Take advantage of the online resources we provide you. You can find them in the weekly newsletters. Take advantage of the weekly offerings, including the Wednesday noonday healing service on Zoom and the Thursday night Lenten program with Stations of the Cross also on Zoom. My brothers and sisters, God invites us to choose the way of the cross. How do we do it? We start with worship and praise. We sing praises to Jesus for overcoming our temptations and our death. We kneel before him in gratitude for what he has done for us. We bow down in humility, in confession and hope. In humility, we ask for grace and forgiveness. We desperately need that inward spiritual power 
to resist the ongoing temptations that we struggle with in our daily lives. Then, we renew our commitment to be kingdom workers. You see, the church needs you. The church needs you. It needs you and me to use our hands and our feet to do the work of the church. To keep the doors of the church open requires kingdom workers. To do the ministries of the church, our worship, Sunday school, fellowship, streaming the service live, maintaining the facility, it all requires workers. We need your hands and feet to ensure that we maintain a strong church for this generation and for future generations. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, that's the outward part of our journey with Jesus. How do we navigate in these times of wilderness? How do we stay in relationship with one another? How do we work together as kingdom workers daily? We will experience hunger and temptations that can only be filled with the word and forgiveness of God. Jesus, Jesus is not looking for perfection. Jesus is looking for your faithfulness. Listen to Jesus calling you. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. As we travel the faith journey, we will fall short of the glory of God. But if, if we must fall short, if we must fail in our efforts, to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being, let us do so in worship. Let us do so in service to Jesus Christ. For he is the true Son of God who died for us redeemed us and promised us eternal life. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.